Hi, my name is Cindy Hansen. I'm the Clinical Director at My Outcomes, and I'm proud to welcome you to Fit Deliberate Practice, the new science. These latest FITE learning lessons have been developed by today's leading experts in the field to help you unlock your potential as a therapist through Fit Deliberate Practice. I'll now hand it over to Dr. Scott Miller, who will share some good news and some not so good news about the efficacy of psychotherapy. So there is some really good news about psychotherapy and it's so different than the news from 50 or so years ago. At that particular time, there was a real question about whether or not psychotherapy was efficacious. Now that question has been answered to everyone's satisfaction. Psychotherapy works. The research literature is very clear. We have decades of outcome research that shows that the average treated person in psychotherapy, regardless of the type of approach used and across a wide variety of disorders and complaints, is better off than 80% of the untreated sample in most studies. I want you to notice what I did not say. I didn't say that we had an 80% success rate. This is the strange, rarefied way that researchers speak to one another. They're always comparing a treated group to an untreated group. And in a room full of untreated people, those who don't get the benefit of working with you, that one person who does is going to be better off than 80% of those who do not. So our effect sizes are very good. In fact, they're on par or better than most medical treatments. The average treated client, for example, has an outcome that is equivalent to the outcomes of coronary artery bypass surgery. The outcome of psychotherapy is four times more effective than fluoride in the prevention of dental caries. So there's really no question about psychotherapy working. Here's another piece of good news, and that is that the average therapist achieves outcomes that are on par with randomized clinical trials. Now, you might wonder, so what? What does that mean? Well, randomized clinical trials are what the government and payers use to identify which treatments they're going to pay for, the so-called evidence-based treatments. So here's what I'm saying. The average therapist achieves outcomes on par with those randomized clinical trials. That is already and before adopting a particular treatment protocol that might be deemed evidence-based. It's really a pretty remarkable finding when you think about it, especially given that most research that's done on psychotherapy really doesn't include clients that are seen in routine clinical practice. Now, there's been some advance in that particular area. We are doing studies with more, more comorbid samples, but in general, therapists are having to take everybody who walks through their door and the clients are in research terms messy. They come with a variety of complaints. They refuse to have one problem. And once more, therapists working with those clients have outcomes that are equivalent to randomized clinical trials. So as I've said, the news is really quite good. You should never let anyone try to convince you that what we do doesn't work, that it's flim flam, that it's not scientific. It really is scientifically validated. So let's talk a bit about what I guess could be called the bad news. And it's pretty bad, so you might want to brace yourself. And that is that the outcomes have not improved over the same time period that the research has been done. So we have lots and lots of studies, and if you look at the effect sizes from 1976, when the first meta-analytic research by Smith & Glass was published all the way forward to 2016, the outcomes have remained relatively flat. Said another way, we're not getting better. Despite the proliferation of diagnoses and treatments, continuing education workshops, we just haven't improved the outcome of psychological treatments. 
that's one piece of fairly bad news. In addition, clinicians, those folks who have outcomes that are on par with randomized clinical trials, despite what they believe and despite their increasing confidence over time, don't seem to get better with experience. It's a very troubling finding. In fact, after a few hundred hours of service, the average clinician's outcomes begin to flatten out. And actually, according to the latest research, a study that I was part of that was conducted in part with Simon Goldberg and the folks at Calgary Counseling Center, those outcomes actually begin to deteriorate. So number one, the field's outcomes haven't improved. Number two, there is a strong tendency for clinicians' outcomes to stagnate and actually decline with time while their confidence rates are going up. There are a few other more troubling findings. One of those troubling findings is our dropout rates. Now, rates, depending on how you define dropout, they vary. But a really solid estimate is between 20 and 25 percent of clients drop out before achieving a reliable improvement in their functioning. And even if we say, well, I don't have a high dropout rate, that might not necessarily be good either. Here's why. A very small number of clients, about 1 in 10, stay in treatment but achieve little or no benefit from the services. And those clients go on to uh, absorb 60 to 70 percent of the costs of providing behavioral health services in the United States. So. We don't seem to be get, getting better with our outcomes. Clinicians' outcomes don't seem to improve, and many clients either drop out of services or stay without achieving a reliable improvement in their functioning. One other piece of news that I think we need to consider and that I know will strike uh, the heart of every clinician, because clinicians really are in this to help people. They're certainly not in it for the money. And one of the findings that emerges from the literature is that we are not very sensitive to failing cases, meaning we just don't notice when clients deteriorate in our care. The last time a research study was done about this was by Hannon back in 2005. And they had about 25 therapists, 500 clients or so, and the therapist had only one job, and that job was to identify those clients on their caseload, utilizing whatever methods they thought they needed to use deteriorated or got worse. That was their sole job, provide the service and tell the researchers which of their clients did not benefit from the service or actually got worse. They also told the therapist the average deterioration rate amongst clients. These were adult clients and the numbers fairly robust. It's about 10%. 10% of people are worse off at the end of treatment than they were at the beginning. Now, I want to point out, I didn't say we caused the deterioration. I merely said that 10% are worse at the end than they were at the beginning. Therapists were told this once again and asked to identify which one of those clients in our practice managed to get worse. I should also say, by the way, if you're working with children or adolescents, the deterioration rate is much higher, double if not a little bit higher. So no one, no one who's in clinical practice wants to miss the clients who they're not helping who are getting worse. 500 clients, 10% average deterioration rate meant that there should have been about 50 deteriorated clients in the whole sample uh, that of Hannon's. There were actually 40 deteriorated clients, which ended up being about an 8% deterioration rate. 40 clients, how many was the question? How many did therapists correctly identify? The answer was one. The question is, what can we do to address this bad news in our field?